Chief is a family-owned, Nebraska-based company comprised of seven diverse brands. Chief, trusted, tested, true. Good morning, everybody. I hope you are staying warm this winter. I know I am. I find myself every day saying how thankful I am to be in a heated shop, someplace warm to work. Grant and I took two days off and went skiing up in South Dakota with our friends and had so much fun. While we were gone, as you know, last video we got this mower into the shop and Gage worked on it a little bit while we were gone and we're going to continue what he was doing today. If you are new to the channel, hi, welcome, I'm Laura. I farm in Nebraska and this winter I am working with my husband and hired man to find old equipment at auctions for cheap, take them home, fix them up, and this year we are going to be farming with them. We found this Rhino SE7 on auction for $200, I believe. And as far as we know, it works. We haven't hooked it up to a tractor to test it out yet, but it has these spots that are rusting out in it. We are just going to weld some metal. I know it'll probably rust out under there, but that's okay. This thing isn't going to get a ton of use. I just want to add some reinforcement there in the middle and on that left side over there also had i don't know if a blade went through it at one point but we are going to be cutting this piece out and welding some quarter inch steel on it that's what the underside looks like hey everyone today i'm going to be working on our rhino shredder that we got a couple weeks back it's pretty beat up as you can see there's stuff that's bent those control arms are bent there's a big hole back here I don't know if that's from one of the flails getting broke off and coming through here or if they hit something and it just cut it open. The side panels are all bent and there's a whole bunch of holes from rust spots along the top here. So today I'm just going to get all this stuff cleaned up, make it look nice so we're able to work on it. And then I'm going to use a telehandler and put it on some jack stands over there and we'll go from there. All right, so now that I got it washed off, you can see it a lot better, but all along here, I'm honestly surprised it hasn't rusted out because water likes to sit in like little cracks like that, even when it's just sitting flat and it'll just slowly erode away and look like stuff like that. So I guess that's pretty thick metal. I don't know what it's probably quarter inch, but definitely I'm, I'm pretty glad I washed it all off because there's a lot of stuff stuck on here. There must've been a, leak at some point in time because that's just all grease that's all gearbox grease and all that take a look underneath the inside not bad there's that big hole those flails i don't want to go under there since no one else is here and it's not up on jack stands but i'm hoping that thing spins that just like on that green mower that we repaired there's a big that big pin goes up to that gearbox and it just spins all the way around so i've never seen one that's an oval All right, now it's up on jack stands, we can take a real good look at it. So along the back side here, we have all of these holes that'll need fixed. We got this, same thing on this side. It's just a whole bunch of these holes, just from the water rust holes. This, I don't know if that should be, that should be twisted like that or if it was twisted. Give it a spin. Oh, it spins. That's a good deal. So at least it spins so we know we know the gears in there aren't all messed up so at first i couldn't get this zerk to take grease so i just ended up dropping the back wheel all i had was a little cotter pin and a washer in the top not that hard but i took it off and pumped some grease through there and it there we go and it broke loose so i'm probably just gonna put the wheel back in so I got it back up in there, but I'm thinking we're gonna need to replace this anyways, because inside these Zerks, 
there's a little tiny spring in the ball. So when that grease pushes in, it pushes that spring back, letting the grease in. When you take it off, in theory, the ball should come back and close this hole. But when I spin, which just spins really well, it pushes this grease out. So I think that we're just going to need to replace that Zerk. But at least it's spinning really freely now. It spins really smooth, too. So that's good. Grant and I took two days off and went skiing up in South Dakota with our friends and had so much fun. And Gage worked on it a little bit while we were gone, and we're going to continue what he was doing today. All things considered, this thing is actually in pretty good condition. I think I'm ready. Pack it down, stitch well. closer to yours. Uh -huh. That first one is looking kind of So see how this is like almost perfectly straight, straight across? All right, here's the first one I did. Not super great. Second one, here's Gage showed me what I was actually supposed to be doing. Not very good. And then this last one that I just did. I feel like that one looks pretty good. Luckily, I've got lots of uh, different welds. So I can see them all right next to each other. It's a good time for me to practice. By the end of this, I'm gonna be really good. Got this piece all welded on. Now before we flip it around to weld that side because our cord isn't that long, we are going to cut this out. We really need to get either another three phase outlet on the other side of the shop or just an extension cord. All right, you think this side first? Yeah, so I'd start at the bottom. Oh, or, start at the bottom? Or you can blow a hole through the top and work down a donut. Okay. So if you blow a hole, you just hold it here for a couple seconds. Remember, don't go, don't have it resting on metal.
all cut out. Now we're just making our guide with some cardboard. Thank goodness I get so many Amazon packages. Got it cut out and it actually fits okay. Mm -hmm. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. So in order to have some room to work and weld and grind all this on, we took the wheel off. So the final component for putting everything back together is going to be putting the wheel back on. And then later, we are going to bring this back in the shop with the box scraper that we worked on and we are going to be painting them. But for now, we're going to wrap up this project by putting the wheel back on. And Pepper's going to help me. Isn't that right? <laughs> Let's see if I can do this. Pep, I think you're gonna have to get off my lap though. I'm gonna need some leverage. At first, we thought that maybe this was bent by accident, but the more we looked at it, we think this is how it's supposed to be. You see? bad. Turns around nice. I think it needs a new greaser, but this should work for now. Maybe we should put a new greaser on after we paint it. It's probably a good idea. That's probably a good idea. We'll leave it in until after we, we paint wait. it. Because yeah. we'll probably paint right over it. Yeah, that's a very good idea. Yeah, we'll put a nice fresh one in there. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> In that case, uh, for now, we are done with this thing. If you're new, we are restoring some equipment. The next thing on our list is going to be getting an old tractor to pull all of this stuff around. So hopefully that should be coming soon. But I really appreciate you guys watching and following along. Looks like Nebraska is going to be having some nicer weather, so we might be able to get outside sometime this week. Wanted to mention before the video ends that if you are interested, I have sweatshirts and t-shirts and hats that say Laura Farms on them. See the back. I think they're pretty cute. I help design them. Yeah, see, there's our farm set. Farm set. You can see the buildings and the corn. I'm pretty proud of it. I am pretty proud of this clothing line. So if you're interested, find that below this video, link in the description, or at bunkerbranding.com. So with that, we will see you guys in the next one. Bye.